G'day, you nine. How are you going? Today, we are using uh, the trigonometric ratios that we've been learning about in order to find unknown sides of triangles. Uh, so what we need to do uh, for each question is we need to look at uh, what information we are given in the diagram. So we've got to see where is the angle position that we uh, know about? Where is the right angle? And then what are the sides that we know and what are the sides that we don't know? Um, and when we look at those relative positions for each other, we'll be able to choose the correct uh, ratio uh, that we're going to use, so sine, cos, or tan, based on the positions of everything. Uh, once we've done chosen the correct ratio, we're going to set up an equation using our SOHCA TOA rules, okay? So we've got to remember that SO, okay, S-O-H, stands for, well, sort of helps us remember uh, that the sine of the angle equals the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Okay, so we've got to remember that S is for sine, but it's sine of theta or of the angle equals the opposite side over the hypotenuse side. In the same way, if we were choosing cos, uh, it would be cos of the angle uh, equals the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And if it was tan, tan of the angle equals the opposite over the adjacent. Okay, and once we have set up that equation, uh, we can then rearrange that equation uh, to solve uh, and find the unknown. Uh, so let's do a few examples of this. Uh, so here we have uh, the angle is here and we have the opposite side and we have the hypotenuse side. Uh, now we don't know the opposite side, but we do know the hypotenuse side and we do know the size of the angle. So as the question says, we're going to use sine because we have the opposite and the hypotenuse. So it's going to be sine 27, so sine of the angle equals, okay, and you can put brackets around that because that's what your calculator will do, equals uh, the opposite, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 20, okay? And then we stop and we look at our equation that we've written and we go, where is the unknown? We can see that x is clearly on the top of that fraction there. So we need to times by 20 to both sides to get the x on its own. So if I times both sides by 20, I get sine 27 equals x. Okay, uh, or 20 uh, sine 27 equals x. So I just pop that in my calculator, 20 sine 27, close your bracket, and then you get uh, the following answer. So what does it want to one decimal place? Okay, so x equals uh, 9.1, or approximately equals 9.1 centimeters. Okay. Uh, now here we have another one. Uh, we have our angle here, except that we've just flipped our right angle around. We still have the opposite side, okay, and the hypotenuse, because that's opposite the right angle. Uh, so it's going to be the same thing, except this time it's sine 68 degrees and 15 minutes equals x over 50, okay? And then we stop and we go, where's the unknown? x is on top of the fraction times both sides by 50. 68 degrees and 15 minutes equals x. And then we can put that value in our calculator. So it's going to be 50 sine 68 and then press our degrees, minutes, seconds, and then 15 press our degrees, minutes, uh, minutes and seconds, and then close our bracket. And then that will give us uh, the size of x. Okay. And then it's to one decimal place. So it's 46.4. 0.4 uh, meters in this case here. Okay, now you should always see uh, that your opposite side should be shorter than your hypotenuse. Remember the hypotenuse is always the longer side of the triangle. So you can always check your answer to check that you put it in right. Uh, if you get an opposite side that's longer than the hypotenuse, then you know you've done something wrong. All right, okay, choose the ratio. We both chose sine in those instances set up the equation and then stop and think, where's the unknown and rearrange to solve it. All right, now in this instance here, uh, we're gonna check, we've got an angle, we've got the opposite and we, uh, we don't know, but we've got our X positioned on the hypotenuse. So this is gonna be similar, but we'll notice there's gonna be something different about it. So sine 65 equals four over X. And we stop and I think, well, oh, hang on, my X is on the bottom of the fraction. 
so what we need to do is we need to uh, somehow get that x off the bottom of the fraction. So I can times both sides by x, and I get sine 65 equals 4. And then I can actually divide by sine 65. So you've got to remember that sine 65 will just become a number. It'll be like a long decimal. Um, but you can divide by that quantity exactly if we just divide by sine 65. So if I leave x here and then it becomes 4 divided by sine 65. Okay, uh, put my brackets around that. Then I can put that in my calculator to find the value of x. Sine 4 divided by oops, sine 65, close brackets. And then to one decimal place, it's 4.4. X equals 4.4 meters. Okay, so in this case, we had the unknown on as the hypotenuse on the bottom of the fraction. We had to multiply and divide. Now, I've done that the long way. Um, you guys will be familiar with sort of cross multiplying where you can sort of do those, that second and third step in one step. Okay, where when you've got an, an equal sign, and you've got two fractions or you've got a fraction and the other, we can just swap the position of the bottom of that fraction with the top of the other side. Okay, we call it cross multiplying. Uh, basically what we're doing is we're multiplying by the bottom of one of the fractions and dividing by the top of one of the other fractions. Okay, and what happens is those things uh, swap positions. So I'll show you the quick way. Uh, if you're confident with this, you can do it this way. Uh, so we'll get sine again because we have the opposite and the hypotenuse. So, so, and then it's going to be sine 18 degrees and 23 minutes equals 6.2. The opposite goes on top and then hypotenuse goes on bottom. And we can cross multiply here. So the y moves to the top of this side and then the sine 18 degrees and 23 minutes goes to the bottom of the other side of the equation. Okay, cross multiplying. We've just done those two steps in one. Uh, so now we can pop that in our calculator. We can go 6.2. Oops. What have I done? Um, 6.2 uh, over, so 18 degrees, 23 minutes, close brackets, equals. Okay, one decimal place will be 19.7. So we get 19.7 uh, centimeters in this instance here. These should all be approximately equal. Okay, so that's how you can find the unknown when it's on the bottom of a fraction. Okay, now here, uh, we'll just do a couple more examples. We won't do all of these. Uh, we've got the cosine ratio because we have the adjacent and the hypotenuse side. So here, um, it will be cos 32. Okay, and then adjacent goes on top, hypotenuse goes on bottom. So we times by 23 because we stop and we think my unknown's on the top of the fraction. So I don't need to cross multiply. I just need to get that unknown on its own by times and by 23. So I get cos 32 and x stays there. And then it'll become 23 cos 32, which is 19.5. Uh, meters okay and then this one you can have a go at this one so pause it see if you can do it hand pause and then check uh if you've done it correct uh so we have the angle here and we've got the adjacent side and the hypotenuse side so it's going to be cos 51 degrees 38 minutes equals the adjacent which is on top and then the hypotenuse which is on bottom we see that x is on the bottom again we're gonna have to cross multiply x equals 52 divided by cos 51 degrees and 38 minutes okay so uh 52 cos 51 degrees 38 minutes close brackets 83.8 Uh, centimeters. Okay, um, so you can see uh, you've just got to check always once you set up your equation, you substitute in the right spots, the adjacent or, you know, goes on top in this case and the hypotenuse goes on the bottom. 
Uh, and then you stop and think, do I need to cross multiply to get the X out of the denominator or do I just need to uh, multiply by a number to get the X on its own? Um, now it's gonna work the same with tan. We've got tan because we've got opposite and adjacent sides. We don't know anything about uh, the, um, the hypotenuse and we don't care about the size of the hypotenuse. Um, and so uh, we just gotta set up our equation. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do the first part of this so I can finish up the video. So tan 31, and then the opposite equals X over, and the adjacent is eight. And you can think, well, I'd have to times by eight to get X or tan. For part B, um, I've got tan again, opposite and adjacent. Uh, it's gonna be tan 53 degrees and 39 minutes equals, and this time 16. So it's toa, okay, O goes on top, adjacent goes on bottom, and this case would have to cross multiply to get X or tan. Okay, good luck with the work today and I'll see you later.